Hello, my name is Ilya and I wanted to present you a new course called In-Depth Ruby that is published on Adionics platform. This course is aimed at developers who wish to learn a Ruby programming language and, well, this language is quite popular these days, uh, well, thanks to Rails framework, of course, but all in all, this language is good by itself. It's an object-oriented language and it allows writing really expressive powerful and easy to maintain code and many developers use it these days. So in this course you will learn about everything about Ruby, about classes, modules, inheritance and exceptions and file system and metaprogramming and many other things. This course is divided in nine sections and each section has from two to seven lectures. And all in all, this course spans more than seven hours, so I will try to give as much information as possible while giving some real-world examples. We are going to create a program throughout this course and explain, uh, using this program I will explain you all ins and outs of Ruby and, well, of course, source code will be available for you at GitHub. I've separated source code into different branches for each lecture, so you will be able to easily track what has changed between lessons. You can, you'll be able to copy this code and use it for your own needs. Also, let me say a couple of words about myself. I have pretty vast experience in education and programming. I was working as Microsoft tutor, I was Cisco specialist, and now I'm working as teacher in Aviation Institute. Also, I'm a freelancer, I'm consultant developer, I'm working with people who wish to gain uh, some new skills in programming, and my current specialization uh, is Ruby and Rails, of course. I am also playing with Elixir these days. I am also a Java programmer and I am specialist on automated testing. Uh, well, you probably have seen some of my articles on the net, uh, well, because I've written many different articles, recorded many videos and courses, so well, um, I really do have some experience in this field. Here is a very brief outline of the course. So in the first section we are going to lay some foundations, install Ruby on your PC, and well in section 2 we will talk about the basics of Ruby, about cycles, if conditions, variables and stuff like that. In section 3 we will continue the discussion of variables and we will also cover classes, methods, modules and inheritance in Ruby, and probably that's going to be one of the most uh, important sections of the course because uh, Ruby heavily um, uh, relies on uh, object-oriented system. Uh, next, in section 4, we will talk about blocks and other callable objects in Ruby. In section 5, you will learn how to handle exceptions in your programs. In section 6, we will work with the file system, and not only actually with file system, with various inputs and outputs. In section 7, we will tackle uh, probably the most powerful feature of Ruby, that is metaprogramming, or the ability to manipulate program structures during runtime. In section 8, we will discuss what Ruby are, how to install them, how to use them, and in section 9 we will conclude this lesson and, well, I will give you some instructions on where to go from this course next. Throughout this course we are going to develop a program, so all the explained concepts will be applied to practice. So hopefully you are eager to learn Ruby and, well, when you are ready I will be waiting for you and, once again, welcome to in-depth Ruby course on Adonix. Hello, and I really thank you for joining me in this in-depth Ruby course on Adonix. My name is Ilya, and this is the course introduction. So, this course is aimed at developers who wish to learn Ruby programming language uh, that is quite popular these days. Well, mostly because of Ruby on Rails framework, but not only because of that. Ruby is a great language by itself. And, well, I don't expect you to have any knowledge of this language at all, so we are going to learn its basics and then slowly move to more advanced things, uh, to metaprogramming and stuff like that. And uh, so let me firstly say a couple of words about myself. 
So I am working as tutor, as author, and as lecturer for many years. So I have pretty vast experience in education. And well, you can reach me out by dropping me a line to my email, or you can visit my personal website to learn more about me, to find my social networks where you can follow me, well, I don't know, say hi and send your feedback or your questions, if you have any questions about this or some other course. And of course, well, my GitHub is open as well, so you can find many different programs there, some demos, and of course, the source code for this course will also be published at GitHub. Uh, so here is the link to uh, the source code. Uh, I'm going to separate, uh, well, I'm going to create separate branches for each lecture, for each video, so you can understand what has changed between videos. You can easily open any branch that, that will be named after the lecture and the section. Uh, so you can use this code as you see fit. You can use it well in your projects. If you don't understand something about this code, you can open a new issue there. Well, I'll try to answer as soon as possible. If you find any bugs with the code, also do open an issue and we'll discuss this bug. So, well, welcome to my, welcome to my repo and, well, let's move next. And here is uh, the outline of the course. The first section will give you a very brief introduction, explain what is uh, the a recommended software, how to install Ruby on your PC, where to get help, and stuff like that. In the second section I will give you an introduction to the Ruby language by explaining its main um, its main uh, constructs like conditions, like cycles, so you will get uh, the grasp of this language, the basics of this language. In the third section we will learn about classes and methods and inheritance in Ruby. That's going to be, I think, the longest section of the whole course and pro probably the most important because it will lie all important foundations uh, because, well, Ruby is an object-oriented language and obviously it is heavily, heavily inspired, well, by uh, languages like Ada, like Lisp, uh, so well, it's heavily object-oriented, uh, therefore talking about classes uh, is very, very important. In the uh, section 4, we'll talk about blocks and some callable objects like lambdas and procedures in Ruby. In section 5, uh, we will talk about how to rescue from exceptions in your program, so how to make your program a bit more bulletproof. Uh, in section 6, we will work with the file system, and not only with file system, so you will learn how to read, how to write to various streams. In section 7, I will give you introduction to metaprogramming in Ruby, probably that's the most powerful feature about this language, so you will learn how to manipulate a program during runtime, how to introduce new methods during runtime, new maybe even new classes, how to tweak the existing classes, how to remove methods and so forth, and so on and so forth. In section 8 uh, we will learn what Ruby gems are, where to get them and how they can be helpful to you. And in lesson uh, in th section 9, we will conclude of this course. I will give you some final thoughts. And that's pretty much it. Now what about the editor uh, that you are going to use throughout this course? Well, it's totally up to you. You can use any code editor as you like. But of course, it will be very helpful if this editor has at least some basic code highlighting. And, uh, well, one editor that I'd really recommend is called Atom. Atom, and it is uh, created by GitHub company. Uh, so it's really, really handy-dandy tool. It's uh, absolutely free, so you can download it. it. Uh, another, well, really popular choice is Sublime Text. Uh, then we have Vim 
that is used quite extensively, especially by seasoned developers. And well, Notepad++, uh, well, you can use it as well. If you are looking for some integrated uh, development environment, then you can try RubyMine, but uh, it is not free, so you're, you'll have to pay for it. And also there is an Aptana Studio, it is free, so you can download it right away. So just make your choice and install any editor or IDE, anything well that you see fit. And also you will need a terminal. So for Nix systems you may use uh, terminal multiplexer and well for Windows I really recommend using console emulator con emu because well the default uh, command line interface on Windows it does not support uh, colorized output also also it does not support tabs so I really recommend using some third party solution like console emulator Throughout this course we are going to develop a quite simple game that I've called just Game of Stones, where uh, two players can enter their names, then there is a pile of stones, and on each turn each player can take a limited number of stones. So for example I can take from one to three stones at once. Okay, it measures how much time I was thinking before making my turn and so the last player who well, takes the stone he loses just like this and then we see the output like this so average time per turn also this output is being printed out to this text file also, this game supports entering uh, options like this, so you can, for example, how many stones should be placed in the pile, and now the initial number is tw 20. Also, all config is stored in a separate file, so like default config, how many stones are there, how many stones can the user take, the minimal and maximum number. And stuff like that. So it is going to be, to be composed of those files you see on the screen here. And we will discuss various uh, things while writing uh, this program. So we will uh, talk about how to output it uh, something to a file, how to employ third-party gems, how to employ metaprogramming, and much more. So hopefully you are eager to get started because, well, I totally am. Well, and when you are ready, just proceed to the next lecture of the section and let's start learning Ruby. Hello and welcome to in-depth Ruby course on Adonix. My name is Ilya and in this lecture we are going to install Ruby on your PC and prepare your machine for further studying. So, if you are working on a Nix system or, on, for example, on Macintosh, uh, you can install multiple Ruby versions at once using RVM tool, and actually uh, that's a suggested way uh, to install Ruby on your machine, because you can easily switch between different versions of Ruby with uh, basically one command. So, to get RVM on your PC, you should visit rvm.io website. Uh, let me open it now. Here it is. And next, you can simply uh, run uh, these two commands uh, to basically install RVM on your machine. And you are good to go. Uh, next, uh, you can uh, simply run RVM install and then the Ruby version. Uh, I would recommend using a Ruby 2.3.4 to install on your machine, although Ruby 2.4 is already available as well. And next you can simply switch uh, between versions using RVM use command and then providing the exact version to, uh, to employ. If you are on Windows, then unfortunately you can you, you cannot use RVM because it is not compatible with uh, Windows. And instead, you should navigate to a special website called RubyInstaller.org. Uh, 
and download the appropriate uh, version there. Let me open this website now. Here it is. And just click on this big download button and then choose uh, the version that works for you. I would actually recommend using this version. Ruby 2.3.3 and do not download this version for 64-bit operating systems because many gems are not compatible with uh, this version of Ruby. So you simply download uh, this installer, you follow instructions with which are pretty uh, simple and after that an additional step is needed as well. So you scroll a bit down the page and next you should download of this uh, development kit uh, archive of uh, four thirty two bits uh, versions only as it said here. So you download this archive and you should extract it uh, to some uh, folder on uh, your PC. So for example uh, here I have this development kit installed on F dev kit. So here are all the files. And basically what this dev kit does is it includes some additional um, files like for example cat file, like cpxe files, secret, uh, crypt file and many others. So those are special files that are needed to compile uh, some gems on Windows machines because unfortunately you cannot compile many gems from scratch, uh, especially the gems that are written in C language. After you download this development kit, you can follow instructions uh, by clicking on this link here. Uh, you will end up on a uh, wiki page and here it basically explains what to do to use a development kit with uh, your Ruby. You should simply uh, change directory to your Ruby installation using command line interface and then inside you should simply run this command ruby dkrb init and ruby dkrb install to basically bind your development kit to the Ruby installation. So that's pretty much it. And now how uh, to test if everything is, wo is working all right. Uh, basically you can open your favorite uh, command line interface and inside you can say Ruby and then V to check of the currently installed version of Ruby and my version is 2.3.3. Uh, also, you can uh, try and install uh, some gem uh, that requires development kit to be present if you are working on Windows. So you can say, for example, gem install, uh, install JSON, for example. And after some time, you should see uh, this uh, phrase, uh, building native extensions. And uh, as you see, it says uh, using development kit. And, and it means uh, that it tries to search for development kit and compile this gem. And if compilation uh, works, and if this gem installs, it is being installed correctly, it means uh, that development kit is properly configured with uh, your system. Uh, if you are working on Linux or on Macintosh, then of course you should not bother installing development kit as it should be done only on Windows. Another thing uh, to mention for Windows users is uh, that you should check uh, that Ruby and uh, development kit are uh, present uh, in your path system variable. Also uh, here I've opened Notepad++ for convenience. Next I open my system settings. Next advanced system settings. Next environment variables. And then search for path here. Copy the string and place it here just for convenience. And note that I have specified path uh, to my Ruby binary files. And also here are these uh, two values for development kit. So to both binary file and special binary files uh, that are um, located inside mingw directory. So both 
these directories should be specified in your uh, path environment variable uh, and also if you modify your path do not forget to reboot your command command line interface so that everything works uh, properly uh, so that's pretty much it that's pretty much it i'm going to close all this stuff and let's return to our um, presentation Next, basically, you should also update your RubyGems uh, software. So, basically, RubyGems is a software to install different libraries, different third-party libraries, to your machine with ease. So, to uh, update RubyGems, you simply say gem update, then system, press enter, and after some time, it is going to check if um, it should be updated. Well, currently I have the latest software installed, so that's pretty much it. Next, you can simply check your Ruby version like we did it before, and also you can che check the version of uh, RubyGems software on your PC. And we are going to use uh, this software to install some third-party gems later throughout this course. Okay. And the last thing to note in this uh, lesson is how you, do you execute uh, your code. So, what to do in order to execute some Ruby code. Uh, the first thing uh, to mention is uh, that uh, Ruby basically has an interactive Ruby shell. And uh, to open it, you should simply say IRB in your terminal. Let's do it now. I'm going to say IRB, and here is uh, my uh, interactive Ruby shell. And here you can basically run any Ruby code, and it is going to be evaluated in uh, real time. So, for example, I can say 1 plus 1, or I can say put string high, for example, just to output some string. And also basically note of this uh, part here. So that's a returned value. So each string, each line of code you enter in Interactive Ruby Shell gets evaluated immediately. So that's how you can test, for example, some new concepts uh, while um, learning some, well, uh, while learning Ruby. Or here you can quickly test some small piece of code so interactive ruby shell is actually very very convenient tool and we are going to use it throughout this course to test various things various lines of code if however you uh, you'd like to store uh, your code in files that's of course possible as well and in order to do this you create a file with rb extension so for example test test.rb for example something like that and uh, next you simply run this command here ruby and then path to your file and this file will be simply processed with the ruby interpreter and uh, the results will be outputted uh, to your terminal if of course all uh, this program outputs anything at all and that's pretty much it. So that's how you execute your code uh, on local machine. And that basically concludes this lesson. And uh, do try to install everything that I have that I have mentioned in this lesson. And well, see you in the next lesson. Hello and welcome to in-depth Ruby course on Edonix. My name is Ilya and in this lecture I will give you a very brief overview of the language itself so that you get a basic idea of what Ruby is and what its main characteristics are. So Ruby was created by a Japanese programmer Yukihiro Matsumoto in mid-1990s. And basically, he wanted to create a language that can be both powerful and expressive 
and language that does not stay in your way. So you basically can concentrate on uh, solving some task and uh, you should not bother of some, well, um, peculiarities of uh, the compiler. And so basically when uh, you are going to write Ruby programs, you will basically see how expressive they are and how easy they are to manage uh, if, of course, you uh, follow some best practices that I'm going to give you throughout this course. Ruby is a cross-platform language and it is interpreted. And basically, in the previous uh, lesson, we were installing an interpreter. And this interpreter is called Metz Ruby Interpreter, or simply MRI. Here it is. Uh, this interpreter is written in C. But there are also two other uh, possibilities, two other solutions that you can use. First is JRuby, written in uh, basically using uh, Java virtual machine. And also there is a Rubinius interpreter uh, that is written in pure Ruby. But actually for now I'd recommend simply sticking to this one, to C. Uh, interpreter written in C language uh, that is basically used by many many programmers. Uh, Ruby is also an object-oriented language and everything is uh, treated like an object in this language and it was basically heavily inspired by languages like Lisp and Smalltalk and Ada. Uh, later we will see why um, everything is an object and why it is good for us. And also, this language is dynamic, uh, so basically, for example, you do not need to explicitly declare your variables. And also, another cool thing is that Ruby supports metaprogramming, meaning that the program can change itself during runtime, and the program can receive some information about itself during runtime. And in one of the next, uh, in the following sections, so we will discuss what metaprogramming is, is and how it can help you to solve some different tasks. And here are our two lines of code in Ruby that are perfectly valid. So, for example, in this first line of code, we expect, we check that a balance of some account is uh, greater than 50. So that's a totally valid line of Ruby code. It is taken, um, well, it is written using uh, RSpec, a special uh, solution to write um, tests for your program. But all in all, it is perfectly valid. So that's basically how a Ruby program can look like. And it, uh, it is, well, you can read it just like um, basic English. So you don't even need to be a programmer to basically understand what is going on here. And another line of code basically says redirect uh, to some home page and return from the, pro, uh, from the current method, for example, unless the currently logged in user is an admin. So once again, that's a valid um, piece of code taken from Ruby on Rails framework. So the language itself is really expressive and I am sure you will like uh, programming using this language. So basically variables in Ruby should not be explicitly declared, so you should not specify the type of a variable that you are going to define. You don't need to say that this is a variable or with a type integer, for example, or that that's an array. Uh, you should not do it in Ruby. In Ruby, you should simply create a new variable and just go ahead and assign some value to it, and that's pretty much it. And moreover, uh, throughout uh, the program, uh, the same variable can store values of different type. Of course, uh, that's not recommended, and well, no one actually uh, does this, but all in all, that's possible. So variables are not explicitly declared with uh, some with with some type. 
Uh, here are some conventions uh, that we should remember before start, starting to write some programs. And first of all, variables should be named in snake case and all uh, down case uh, letters. So here is an example to it. Um, as you see, all letters are small here and individual words are separated with this underscore that basically resembles a snake, so that's why it is named snake case. All classes and modules are named in camel case, and uh, individual words start with uppercase letter, and uh, they are not separated with underscores. So here is an example, my class, and if I draw a line like this, it resembles a hump of a camel, so that's why it is named camel case, basically. Uh, all constants are named in uppercase with underscores to separate individual words. So here is a constant named basically my constant. And as you see, it is in uppercase with underscores separating different words. Uh, also, a very um, important thing to remember is uh, that all your objects, like variables and classes, modules, constants, etc., etc., uh, they should have meaningful names, <clears throat> well, as meaningful as possible. Because later, when you return to your program, like in, in, in a year, for example, and you take a look at your code, you won't understand what is going on, so why this variable was created in the first place. So here is a good example. <clears throat> like we have a variable called account balance equals to 300. That's a good example. And that's a pretty bad example because we don't understand what this B variable is for, what it is doing, why is it here, so it's not a meaningful name. And so once again, do remember to well, spend some time and name your objects properly, so that you and maybe some other programmers that uh, will join the project later understand what is going on, why this object was created in the first place. Um, and also indentations are really recommended in your programs, so when you write your code it should be indented properly, though it is not a requirement, so the program will be run without any indentations at all. It's not like in Python where you must indent your code properly. In Ruby it's not a strict requirement, but it is very, very recommended to indent your code so that you basically understand what is going on, how, you, how lines of your code are related to each other. So that's it. And in Ruby, uh, usually programmers use uh, two spaces uh, for one level of indentation. So do set your uh, text editor properly and uh, don't use uh, tabs uh, to indent your code. It is better to use uh, soft indentations and two spaces for each level of indentation. Uh, Ruby programs uh, usually consists of uh, many small single-purpose methods. So you don't have like one big method that is doing everything. So well, some junior programmers uh, tend to create such methods, but that's well, it's not recommended. So it's much better to create many separate methods that are doing only one thing, because later it is easy to change your program to change some pieces of your code without breaking some other methods methods maybe and also it is much easier uh, to test your program later when you have many uh, separate methods because when you have only one big method it is well become increasingly hard to test your program and to understand what is going wrong in your program. So those are some conventions that we are going to follow in this course. I am going, of course, to remind about them later as well, so you get used to those conventions, but all in all, they are pretty simple, as you see. 
So well, uh, this concludes uh, this lesson on uh, language overview, and let's proceed to the last uh, lesson of uh, this section and uh, discuss where to get help and where uh, to find documentation for Ruby if you have some hard time understanding what some method is doing, for example. Hello and welcome back to in-depth Ruby course on Idonics. My name is Ilya and this is the last lecture of this section. And here I'm going to explain where to search for, for some help if you are stuck while programming Ruby. Of course, in this course I will try to give you as many information as possible, but after all I cannot explain all caveats of a language, I cannot well pinpoint all uh, potentially uh, problematic places, for example, and so on and so. Uh, so um, you should know about some useful websites that can come in handy. And first of all is the collection uh, of uh, resources uh, that uh, can be found on the official website of a language. <clears throat> so you can visit rubylang.org and then documentation. And there you are going to find many different resources and also some recommended books to read or uh, to study Ruby. And uh, I really recommend browsing this page sometime. Also, uh, one of uh, the most useful websites is API documentation for the language and it is available at rubydoc.org website and I uh, personally use uh, this website quite often uh, because it's uh, very convenient and it has lots of useful information and also it provides some examples. So let me uh, show you of this uh, resource now. So here I've opened rubydoc.org and then documentation for the version of uh, 2.3.3 and here on uh, the right side you can see all of the classes here and all the modules uh, that are found in the core uh, of uh, the Ruby language. So you can for example click on this array and you are going to see information about what arrays are and how to work with them. And on the left side you will find all the methods that are, can be run, that can be called upon your arrays. And you click on any method, for example this each method to traverse an array, and you see what this method accepts, how to call it, and here you can also find uh, this example and you can actually copy uh, this line of code here. You can open your interactive Ruby shell, you can place it inside and simply see uh, the output yourself right away. So very, very convenient, very convenient. Also, uh, there is uh, a similar resource uh, that is called API Doc. And this resource basically resembles a Ruby doc and it provides documentation not only for Ruby but for Ruby on Rails framework uh, that uh, you can learn about in uh, my other course that is published on Edonix. It is called um, Getting Started with Ruby on Rails. And also this resource uh, has some documentation for RSpec. And RSpec basically a domain-specific language to write tests uh, for your Ruby programs. So this resource provides uh, different documentation and not only for Ruby. But to be honest, I personally prefer to use Ruby Doc when browsing docs for of the language for the Ruby language itself. And also, of course, uh, you can uh, browse uh, stackoverflow.com website. It is an immensely powerful website and it is used uh, by many programmers who wish to share their knowledge. So basically here you can find uh, uh, some questions uh, that are being asked by your fellow programmers basically and there are, are um, well, in most cases you can find an answer very quickly to frequently asked questions. And if for some reason you can f cannot find an answer for your question, you can post Post this question yourself and just wait for someone to answer it and uh, this community is really large 
And so there are specialists in various uh, technologies, in Ruby, in Rails, RSpec, and other languages. So if you don't know about this website, I really recommend browsing it sometime because it's very, very helpful, seriously. Uh, and also, if uh, you are on Windows, you can open this uh, directory with your Ruby installation, and inside you will find uh, this doc folder, and uh, here are some uh, useful files inside. First, first of all, there is a book of Ruby PDF file. This is uh, basically an introduction to the language. It is completely free. And uh, if you want to get a grasp of the Ruby language, I really recommend reading this book as well. And also, as you see, there are some compiled HTML helper uh, files with uh, the offline documentation for Ruby. So basically here you can find, here is for example this array once again. So uh, this is the information that you can use offline if you don't have an internet access for example okay and lastly you can open uh, your command line interface and use a tool called called ri ri basically can display uh, information about uh, classes uh, modules and methods in ruby but it only works if your ruby was compiled with an offline documentation and that's not the case for ruby installer that i use to install it on my windows machine uh, so if i type array here i will basically get some information from different gems that from third-party libraries that are installed on my PC, but I won't see any information about a basic array in Ruby, because my uh, Ruby is not compiled with an offline documentation. But if you are compiling your Ruby manually, for example, for Linux systems, you can uh, take advantage of this RI tool, which is quite convenient as well. So that's pretty much it. Uh, that's it. And uh, this lecture concludes uh, this first section uh, where we were laying foundations for our course. Uh, hopefully by now you are ready to proceed to the next section of this course. And well, see you there.